In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use SEMrush to do keyword research to increase your traffic and increase your rankings online. And I'm gonna show you how to do this step by step. So stick around because you don't wanna miss any of these tips. So let's go. So the tool I'm gonna to show you how to use today is the magic keyword tool inside of SEMrush. Now, if you don't have SEMrush, that's okay because we partnered with them to be able to give you a free seven day trial. All you have to do is click the affiliate link in the description below. So once you've signed into SEMrush, you're gonna see on the left-hand side, there is a magic keyword tool option. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna click on this. So the point of this tool is to help you do keyword research, to help you find keywords that are actually competitive. One of the biggest mistakes that we see SEOs and website owners make is that they focus on their most competitive keywords first. The problem with doing this is that these keywords are often way too competitive. You're never gonna win them. You need to start with low competition keywords that you can actually start to win to move the needle and help your website get to a point where it can actually compete for those bigger, more competitive keywords. So let's imagine that I'm a business that sells plumbing tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a plumbing tool like a plumbing wrench inside the keyword magic tool. And we're gonna see what SEMrush comes up with. So you can see here that SEMrush is coming up with keywords based on the intent, the volume, and the keyword difficulty. So we're gonna spend just a little bit of time talking about all three of these things. So number one, the intent is super important. This is something that has changed a lot with the way that Google search has changed over the years. Now the intent of the query matters a ton. We have to make sure that the content that we're writing or the page that they're hitting actually matches the intent of the query. So you can see here in SEMrush that it's showing an informational and a transactional intent for this keyword. That's great news for me if I wanted to write informational content to be able to target this word. The next thing you'll see is the monthly search volume. So these are estimates. So this one's showing 4,400 a month. And then the KD is the keyword difficulty ratio. Obviously the higher this number is, the harder time you're gonna have ranking for this keyword on Google. So ideally you wanna find keywords that have a low KD percentage and a high monthly search volume and that matches the type of intent of content that you wanna to create to market for. Now plumbing wrench is a pretty general keyword. What's even better is if we can find a long tail keyword, meaning a keyword that has multiple words in it, as these are usually less competitive and easier to win. So for example, like plumbing wrench adjustable has an informational intent. So I could write a blog post that explains what this sort of tool is and how it's used. It has decent search volume and it's a really low KD. I should be able to move the needle a little bit on something like that. Um, here's another one, a plumbing spud wrench. That's kind of a unique tool. So I'd wanna actually optimize the transactional intent page, which would most likely be a product page. But see, this has 170 views per month and it's only a 5KD. So that's a pretty good keyword if I was actually trying to optimize a product page. Now inside of the keyword magic tool, you can also look at questions to help you to come up with more ideas when it comes to keywords. Now these questions are actually keyword phrases and you can see that some of these questions have some search volume, but a lot of these questions don't. So I would wanna try and come up with some different keywords up here to help me come up with some maybe different questions or maybe some of these questions will help me to think of some more keywords that I could put in. Now you can also change this to phrase match, exact match and related. Um, broad match is kind of what I would recommend. Again, Google has changed a lot of this. They don't really honor exact match anymore um, in their ads platform. So you really are just kind of guessing here with SEMrush, but for most cases, broad match should work fine. If you want to get into the weeds with exact match um, or phrase match, you're welcome to do that. Now, another thing to consider is that there are lots of applications for when you would want a plumbing tool. So that means I could potentially focus on things like how to repair a leak, right? Or how to to repair a leaky faucet. Now I can change my keywords at any time or get ideas by simply just putting in a new one up here in the top and hitting search. So you'll see here now that SEMrush has given me a whole new set of keywords with all new data. And you can see that these are very informational intent type keywords that make sense based on the query. So if we take a look at this list, a lot of these are way too high on the KD ratio. Unless I have a website that is winning a lot of 50 KD keywords, I have no business targeting a word like this. But if we scroll down like a very specific long tail keyword, like how to repair a leaky Moen kitchen faucet, while it doesn't have a lot of search volume, it's very relevant to what I'm doing and the KD ratio is a little bit lower to where I might be able to actually move the needle on this. And somebody is actually really looking for a very specific answer to this. So this isn't a bad keyword to target. So anytime you find a keyword that you think looks good, all you have to do is click on it inside of SEMrush and it's gonna give you even more metrics and data. This is what I really like about SEMrush. So here it's showing me what the global volume is compared to the US volume, the keyword difficulty, 
um, the questions that have to do with this, which is very helpful when it comes to content ideation or creating content. Um, you can see here some of the keyword clusters that it has here. One of the things I really like about SEMrush as far as helping you to come up with content to write is that it shows what the top results are for this actual keyword phrase. So you can see that the top result is a YouTube video, the next one's from Mullen, the next one's from Mullen, another one's YouTube, one's Quora, another one's YouTube, Just Answer, Instructables. So what I could do if I was using a tool like ChatGPT is I could open up the top four results that are not videos. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this Moen one. I'm going to open up this other Moen one. Then I'm going to open up another one from this Just Answer. And then I'm going to pick this other Instructables one right here. So I've got four up that are within the top 10 that show how to fix a leaky Moen faucet. So now what you can do is take the URLs from each of these. I'm going to copy the URL. And then inside of ChatGPT, if you've got the ChatGPT 4.0 model or above, you can actually have it crawl and learn the content of these things. So I could say learn the content at this URL. I'm gonna paste in the URL and it's gonna learn that content. So now I'm gonna go move on to the next URL, which was this Moen one. I'm gonna copy the URL here. And I'm gonna pull up ChatGPT back in here. I'm gonna say also learn this information. I'm gonna paste in that URL. And I'm just gonna add one more URL for good measure here. So I'm gonna open up this Moen URL, I'm gonna copy this URL and also pop it in the chat GPT and say also learn this information, paste in the URL. So now essentially what I've done is I have given and fed ChatGPT the information for the top three results on Google that are not YouTube videos for this content. So now that I have this in ChatGPT, I could say now write me a 500 word article um, using the information that you've learned. So now ChatGPT has taken the top results on Google and written a new article using some of the same or similar information. Now I would not want to just copy and paste this into a blog post and call it my article. But this is a great way to get a starting point. So to start massaging this content, I would just click the copy button here in ChatGPT for the answer that it gave me. And I'm just gonna paste it inside of a Google Doc so that you can just visually see the content that it created here, right? So it created the title for how to fix a leak email and faucet, step-by-step -step guide. Number one, you identify the source of the leak, the tools and parts you'll need. So again, this is where I would wanna change this, maybe put some links to some of the products that we would offer if I'm the type of company that sells products. I'd also want to add some extra value to these sections that give some different points of view or some of my expertise um, if I were in the plumbing industry. But you can see if we keep going here, it then goes into how to repair the leaky faucet. And I would want to double check this because ChatGPT has a tendency to make things up, right? So I want to make sure that everything in here looks good. I want to change it. I don't just want to copy and paste what ChatGPT gave me and put it in a blog post that can actually harm you um, from a Google perspective. But this is a great way to take good information that Google's already deeming as valuable and being able to create a new piece of content using some of that information to give you a jump off point to be able to make your changes, add your value, and then post your content. The other thing I really like if we go back to SEMrush inside that keyword tool is after you've clicked on a keyword and it's showing you the top results, it's also showing you what the page authority score is or the DA or the domain authority. So you can see, you know, YouTube, I'm not gonna compete with that. Some of these though are, I can't compete with, right? Like Moen's page here only has a page authority of 14. There's only eight backlinks here. And SEMrush makes it easy to be able to see of the content that you want to compete with whether you have a chance or not right because if this was a authority score of like 50 and they had 400 backlinks i would know it. there's just no way i'm even going to have a chance of hitting that second or third spot in google but i have a chance here right like if i was seriously competing for these keywords these authority scores are pretty low the backlink count is really low and this is where a tool like SEMrush is very very valuable because you're not going to be able to find this information in an easy way using a free tool like ChatGPT, which it has no idea or the google keyword planner um, analytics or search console it would take a really long time for me to try and pinpoint you know that competition how many links it has 
Google's not really gonna give you that information. So you have to use a tool like SEMrush. That's why we find SEMrush to be very valuable when it comes to keyword research, is because it gives us all the information that we need at a glance to be able to make decisions. So if I liked this keyword, you know, of how to repair a leaky Moen kitchen faucet, I could save that, put it on a list. We typically use this keyword magic tool to be able to build out good strategic lists of keywords that are winnable, that have good search volume, and then also have the intent information on there so that we can make sure that we strategize and craft the content to match the intent. So I hope that this video has helped you to understand how to use SEMrush to be able to do keyword research to find low competition keywords that you can actually win. And again, if you don't have SEMrush, all you have to do is click the affiliate link below in the description to be able to get a seven day free trial. That way you can try SEMrush out and see if it's the right solution for you. If you found this video helpful, please make sure that you hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that you'll be notified when we put out more helpful content like this. And if you want to learn how to do more advanced keyword research, make sure that you click on this video where we go over step by step how to do advanced keyword research, just like we do here at BKA Content. Thanks so much for joining me today and we'll see you on the next video.